Oh, how to introduce Pierre again. I refer to him as King Rust. Uh, Great. <laughs> so it works. It works. Fine. Today he's going to talk about another language than Rust, I suppose. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Well, every year a new, a new different language. So maybe next year it will be JavaScript or whatever I propose. So. Yeah, very different ID, uh, so nice logo, whatever. So what am I trying to uh, do is write parsers for everything that could be uh, passed. Um, also interested in weird language characteristics, stuff you don't want to do, for example, adding integers to objects, whatever it gives, and see the results. And uh, well, exchange bad jokes with Eric, uh, mostly on, on Twitter. So uh, today's talk is not going to be about trust, uh, but you can blame me anyway for, for, for this. Sometimes, you know, you do stuff and you annoy people for uh, many years, so cool. Um, what it is about is generating PCAP files. I have a great need of generating that kind of files. Um, and I want to generate complete files. So we'll see how I tried to tackle this problem and uh, what can be done later. So I'm not going to tell you that it's important to generate pickup. I believe everyone's uh, already knowing that. Uh, why especially my use case were firstly uh, testing my own parsers because, uh, well, I do fail very often. Uh, testing robustness because I'm not interested in writing something that just passes the standard protocol. I'm mostly interested in seeing, for example, what happens when uh, someone submits crappy uh, uh, PCAP files and if the parser will crash or give you some random result and so on. And I don't like uh, compliance, you know. Uh, Unit test is good, of course, but sometimes to test limits, you have to generate different kind of uh, uh, finds and data. So how can you obtain data? Of course, you can have real-world captures or generated finds mostly. Um, the problem is uh, when you work for a uh, you know, national uh, government agency, you cannot share uh, data from real-world captures. Um, and of course, very often in companies too. So I have to generate files so I can share them with you guys. Uh, what I really want to do is also very important. It's split two problems which are really different and very often mixed. I don't want to split the generation with sending uh, uh, the pickup problem. So there are good tools to send uh, pickups very fast, so T-Rex and so on. I don't want to do that. I just want to generate something. I also don't like, you know, I'm mostly a low-level guy, so I don't like high-level interfaces. You know, you just give a description and, and then you get a pickup. I want to be able to completely tweak any single packet from the file. I want to change it. And I'm not interested in valid data. I want to be able also to, for example, generate data with a completely changed length field and so on just to, st to test uh, well, uh, if the parsers are robust and so on. So first of all, I, I have to say that uh, there are already projects to generate data. And as in XKCD uh, stated, when you have so many tools and you have an ID, what do you make? Another tool. So I'm very sorry for that, but I created just another tool. I will explain why. Um, the real reasons are just stated after, um, well. So why did I use, what did I use? I used Scapy. So what's Scapy? It's the only tool you have to know if you want to manipulate uh, network data. It's great. Uh, so it's written in Python. It's French. I don't know if it's good or bad. You, you choose. Uh, there are a lot of protocols. Uh, easy syntax. Well, it's great. There are also interesting features like Automata because uh, you want to be able to modelize your protocols with state machines and just do not have to, go to you know, uh, code the entire functions step by step. So it's great. So for those of you 
which may not know SCAPI, what does it look like? Well, you see very modern uh, interface. So it's just a Python interpreter. Uh, so you can create packets very easily. You have some default values that are very cool. You can modify uh, fields in a very easy way. It's really great. You have also um, functions to send uh, packets uh, and receive. So SRP is send and receive packets. So you can even communicate with uh, not only forging data and manipulating it, but you can send it over the wire and get replies. So you can communicate with real uh, hosts, whatever. What the problem is, is SCAPI is very good to manipulate one packet at a time. But when you want complete communications, you have to forge every single packet. So if you know TCP, who likes to compute TCP sequence and acknowledge numbers, right? That's really an interesting game. And then the same for uh, protocol with cryptography and so on and so on. So generating stuff with CAPI is really good if you have one packet to modify, but if you want to call generate a complete session, it's really a pain. So what I have used is scappy bytes. So there is a recurrent joke in France that is scappy is absolutely not documented, which is partially true, but mostly true. Scappy bytes is a part of scappy that is absolutely not known even by the guys uh, developing scappy and absolutely not documented. So I had to, well, get in touch with the only guy who wrote the, uh, uh, that uh, he was the documentation actually. So what it provides is complex stream data management. So it was just said, so you have a concept of feeders, drains, which are mostly uh, classes, Python classes that you can use to send data, modify them, and you have sinks, which are stuff that, for example, you can use that to uh, print data uh, directly on the console or uh, send it to a Wireshark, for example, instance. What we're going to use is this notion of drain, which I will call the later just object, uh, differently from what was intended in SCAPI uh, at first. So I used it uh, to represent something which is very different. So I used drains, which are exactly the same object than previously, to create IP, uh, objects, Ethernet objects, and so on. And each layer is a completely autonomous uh, class. So as you can see, it has two inputs and two outputs. One is connected to the lower layer, one is connected to the upper layer, and so on and so on. And there is a bus to interconnect things. Well, I just recreated the ISO representation of, uh, uh, um, well, protocols. But what's interesting is that every object will be able to manipulate data, changing and send it to uh, another layer. So what does it look like? Uh, on the top, you have SCAPI regular use of how you create a packet, right? You want to create, for example, a, a, a SNMP packet, which is broadcasted. Actually, it's a very stupid example. Well, right. Um, I like stupid things. Uh, so you do it that way. What I created, Scapi flows, uh, is the very same, uh, you know, addition of layers to that you can create just by using this slash uh, operator. So you just stack objects, uh, one on of top of the other, and then you can do whatever you want. So if you want to create, for example, uh, a TCP SNMP server, you just replace that object by TCP drain, and that's all. That's all you have to do. If you have, for example, if you need to uh, insert, for example, TLS, you would just insert a new TLS drain uh, between two, two layers, and you can completely control wh what will be done. So this actually works, and it's completely enough to create a basic SNMP server. It, this is what I used to test, uh, for example, the SNMP parser from Sorikata 5. You can emulate server side, you can emulate client side. So this is the code that you have, for example, to send to just send uh, an SNMP request uh, on this particular OID. So 
This is hiding a lot of complexity because, uh, for example, this is BER, which is the best protocol in the world. Yeah, I, that's something like my fourth or fifth parser I, I'm writing for BER. So, uh, well, how does it work in the engine? Well, just a few slides because I won't go into details. Not sure you want that just before lunch. Uh, each layer has just to, for example, uh, check that data is intended to be sent to Hint, decode it, eventually do some stuff, and send it to the upper layer, that is, reception side. So if you receive an IP message, you just check it is IP and send it uh, the upper layer. You might want to do something more complicated. It's a very, very stupid example. And on the other way, uh, to send data back, which means to send data, for example, you just have to encapsulate uh, the message you receive into your layer. So this is done using one simple line here, which is you create the IP header and just add uh, the message right after. So as you can see, it's very, very easy. Well, uh, at least it seems because wh when you have to deal with fragmentation, segmentation, and so on, it becomes much more fun. Uh, but it is what, what works. So what's currently implemented? Uh, some, well, basic protocols you have to use. Uh, I forgot Ethernet, of course, uh, SNMP, DNS, TLS, and I'll talk about that in the next uh, slide. So I'll give you a few use cases I had and how I did uh, use SCAPI flow to uh, deal with these use cases. Um, for example, I want to test uh, devices, IDS, whatever implementation. And I want to test, for example, robustness uh, with respect to packet inversion, retransmission, and so on. So how do you do that? You just insert a layer using this slash operator like I showed. Uh, based on the NetEM class, if you know the NetEM module from uh, Linux, uh, it just does random, randomly uh, removal, duplication, whatever, of packets. It was quite, quite fun, actually, to code because I had to wonder myself what kind of stupid, stu what is the most stupid thing I can do uh, with, with packets? Uh, um, if you have any ideas, please contribute. Um, and in fact, it, it was really complicated to add because I just discovered that the very simple design I was doing was not complete enough. I had to uh, add handling of timeouts, which was much more complicated to add, but in the end it worked. One other case I will not present it, but it would be interesting in that I wanted to, for example, generate data input for any single signature that uh, is in the ET uh, rule set. So what I tried to do was something which I called uh, Xeger, because it's the opposite of uh, regex. So you just pass the signature, you just generate data matching the signature. Uh, and then you forge the packet using that. It seems simple unless you discover the flow bit, flow int, and so on uh, states, and then it becomes much more complicated. But uh, using that, you can generate data for something like 70% um, of uh, ET, uh, ET Pro rule set quite easily. Uh, I use that, for example, to test uh, also performance and uh, see if, for example, adding a new signature takes time or, or not uh, when you update your rule set. So the third use case was fudging. So you know what fudging is. Um, the problem with network protocols is that most of the, these protocols are stateful. And when you want to fudge something, not only the first packet you have to reach a specific state before trying to do something stupid. And reaching some state can be quite, quite problematic because uh, many protocols require complex computations. So using that, uh, I used complete protocol implementation, so it does all of the work for us, which is great. And I, don't, I have only to uh, write something very easy. It could be plugged to libfudger if there is some Python bindings. I, sure it, could, it can be done. And the fourth use case was, okay, it's great, so you can, well, generate data and generate PCAPs, but can it be used to, this, to communicate with a real device uh, on the network? And it can, 
actually because uh, SCAPI has uh, features to send or receive data. So you just um, plug uh, a row socket to the bus. Won't go into the ugly details, but you just have to do that. Keep your client as it was written, and you can communicate with real devices, real things, and uh, send packets and watch uh, usually devices, for example, ICS devices, uh, crash because they usually do not like uh, receiving r random data. But hey. Um, yeah. So these are a few use cases I've uh, done using SCAPI flow, which I, b I believe is really something that is interesting to, to do that. So to conclude, well, I must be honest, so what's good? Uh, it's Python, so it's very easy to do some stuff, you know, craft a file. It works, I expected, it's very flexible. You can generate pickups, and adding a DSL, or high level language, will be possible. The bad, well, it's Python. Uh, and I must say which Python, so I believe it's working with Python 3, uh, and it's really slow, really, really, really slow. Um, while it's not that much of a problem if we send data using T-Rex or, or something like that, because the pickup will be ready, but if you're communica communicating with a real device, it can be problematic. And timeouts, well, they are a nightmare. And, well, What's remaining to do? Well, release the code, because I'm very sorry for that. I intended uh, originally to release it during Suricon, uh, but the code is classified, so I in invented the TLP ugly uh, classification. Right now, uh, I enjoyed a lot uh, writing Python, as you can imagine. It's not Rust. I, I'm ranting a lot, you know, against the interpreter. I'm like, uh, so Python, yeah. Uh, so actually the code is not that great, but it works. I will clean up, and what's interesting, I believe, compared to the other projects existing, is that I intend to make it part of the upstream SCAPI uh, engine. Uh, they are uh, okay with that, just not with the PR in, in its actual form. So. Uh, so it will be merged at some point, I hope uh, as soon as possible. And I'm not using some of the features of SCAPI uh, which I intended to use um, because SCAPI, in the way it is actually uh, uh, designed, requires often root privileges uh, to, to do stuff. And I'm not even root on my laptop, so yeah, I'm protecting against myself. So uh, I cannot uh, use it uh, at the moment. So I have to redesign stuff so that SCAPI Automata can be used without being uh, root on the, on the system. But that will be done at some point. So this is, well, an overview of what, what has been done. I hope you like that. And if you have any question, I'd be happy for that. Yeah, this is my regular hardened uh, Suricata instance. So thank you very much. Uh. Just a question about uh, the packet captures that you're generating from the signatures. Like, it's awesome. Uh, kind of curious. Um, the, I, I, and, I th and you kind of mentioned it that they're good for performance and regression tests. They're not going to be like complete packet captures for the protocol itself, unless if that happened to be in the signature somehow, right? Because you're only able to generate a PCAP from what the pattern is, right? Um, not, I'm not generating PCAP only for this pattern. Uh, for example, for HTTP, I generate a complete HTTP session. For FTP, there would be a login uh, sequence, for example, before uh, downloading a file and so on. But you have to do all that uh, quite manually at the moment. But yes, it is intended to generate complete sessions, not only the, the only packet triggering stuff. And sometimes you also have to generate a, a complete sequence of events right. uh, because, for example, of the flow bits and flowings because they are uh, states. So yes, it's complicated. It's not complete right now, but uh, this is part of the problem. Yeah, very, I mean, 
it's very hard to do, but very impressive. Look forward to get my hands on it when it's ready. Thanks. Sure. Everyone's hungry. Well, thank you.